in the Collard Valley Cook Kitchen. And tonight we're making a berry pie. And then we're gonna turn around and make some Philly cheese steaks. Now, some of y'all think they're not true Philly cheese. Of course they're not. I'm not up in Philly, okay? <laughs> I'm down here in Georgia. But this is our version, okay, of Philly cheese steak hoagies. But we're gonna have them on hamburger buns tonight. All right, that recipe is in our second cookbook, and we'll be using that recipe. But first, we're going to make a berry pie. I'm going to use my new baking dish from Bob. Thank you, Bob. And we're going to use our apple pie recipe that's in the third cookbook, but I'm going to substitute apples and use berries, okay? So, I have got these berries, and this is all the berries I have. Except I do have a few strawberries, but... I'm hoping this will be enough for our pie. And so the first thing I think I'll do right quick is put a pie crust down on the bottom of this. This is a refrigerated pie crust. And since this pie dish doesn't have an edge, this pie crust is not gonna come up high enough in it, which is fine. So I'm just gonna do it like that, okay, for now. Now, to make this pie, it's super simple. All you do is you take sugar, you're gonna use a cup of sugar. Let me grab my sugar. And all my dishes just got dried because we made a cake today. Woo! It's hot enough to fog up my glasses. <laughs> so we need, how much is a cup? A cup, okay. Cup's a cup. Woo, that's hot, Daddy. Gonna burn me. All right, sugar. So it's a cup of sugar with some apple spice and four tablespoons of flour. So, we're going to grab our white lily flour. And I've got the sugar label on it for some reason. Well. I know, but I know it's not sugar. So, let's put in the flour. For, uh, four tablespoons. One. Two. Three, four. That was a little heapy. That's fine. So it's self rising. It's self rising, flour. but you can use any flour oh, for this. Oh, it doesn't this. matter. Okay. Yes. All right. So we are going to whisk it together good. And let's go ahead and throw some spices in here. We're going to use some cinnamon. And I'm not even going to get out something and measure it. And we're going to use some cardamom. And we're gonna mix that up. Is that what they, what is that? What? Like, what do they use that for? I just like it. Oh, is it like in an apple pie spice or yes. something? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you smell it? Yeah. You can smell that's, the cardamom. Yeah, that's why I asked, because I could smell it. Let's add a little more cinnamon. Cinnamon? Cinnamon. Because it smells more like cardamom than cinnamon. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Lord. And what I was going to do, actually, was, oh, what I need, Daddy, is something to toss this in. Let me just grab a... Just get one of them popcorn bowls we use. Oh, yeah, I can do that. That's, that's big enough. All right. looks good and stained and used. It's all right. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take, this is a half stick of butter, mm -hmm. and I'm going to save just a little bit of it for the top of, of the pie, and we're going to pour it in here except for a little bit of it, okay? And then I'm going to take my berries, and I'll tell you to do this in the recipe, but that's the plus about watching videos, right? And then I'm going to toss these in you this get, butter. You get the real story. Yeah. The rest of the story. 
so just toss them so that they're a little bit wet. And the reason we're doing this is so that that flour and sugar will stick to them. Otherwise, they were cold and dry, and I don't think it would have stuck to them very well. And you're gonna want it dispersed good. See, that butter's already getting hard on them because they were cold. Look at it. They look like they're frosted. All right, so now we're gonna put this in there with them. There. And we're gonna put them in the pot. Okay. And usually when I make an apple pie, it is heaping really tall. And I, this is all the berries I have, so I can only make make it with what I've got. I was gonna put a can of cherries in with it, and Chris didn't think I needed to, but I very well could have. See, Daddy? So when you make an apple pie, you make it go like all the way up to there. Mm -hmm. Mm. So it's gonna be a wimpy, skimpy pie, but it'll be good. It'll get done faster. Now, for my apple pie, you gotta make it, bake it 90 minutes, but since I don't have quite as much in here, um, it may not take it quite that long. Now, I'm gonna take some of the sugar and and just put over the top of it. Hmm. And that's just going to help it thicken up and make a good feeling. Feeling. All right. So we're going to take this one, put on top of it. And with this one, I actually want to cut it a little bit, just a little bit. Not a lot. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to pull it apart just a little bit. I like the crust anyway. You do? Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to have a lot of crust, ain't it? Mm -hmm. I should have pressed on that thing harder. That's what you said last time you used it. I know, and I still didn't remember. I'm getting old. I don't remember everything. I do everything like I used to. Right, the first mm -hmm. time. I don't know if I can hear you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're whispering. I'm whispering. That's not normal for me, is it, y'all? No. I usually so loud that everybody can hear me across the neighborhood. All right, look. I'm going to take these two, um, what do you call them? Crusts. Crusts. And kind of mend them together a little bit here. I'm not some perfect perfectionist pie maker. Pie baker maker. I'm just going to pinch it all the way around. And then we're going to get it in the oven and then we're going to start a fill of cheese steaks. So if you're tuning in and you're just coming in, we're about to make some Philly cheesesteaks for supper. I just thought I would put a berry pie in the oven because I bought berries on sale and I hadn't ate them all. I hadn't used them. They're really good for arthritis and inflammation, if you don't know that. Um, and that's a good excuse to eat a cherry pie. Not a cherry pie, but a berry pie. <laughs> so y'all won't get to see the end of this. We'll, we'll, put, we'll a put a picture, picture of it, okay? okay? So what you're going to do now is take your little bit left of butter, pour it over the top, and then I'm gonna put cinnamon sugar on the top. Let me go grab my cinnamon sugar, and then we're gonna get it in the oven. And no, I don't always have everything laid out. Like, I, I think I got stuff and then I don't. That's it. Raspberry blackberry pie. Raspberry blackberry pie. 
You know what? I had a pie, um, birdie pie, and I don't know where he is, so I can't put him in there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you're supposed to use it when you do fruit pie. Really? Yes. So we're going to put this in here and bake it at 300 degrees for 90 minutes, y'all. A long time. Yep. But it's worth it in the end. Yep. That's why y'all won't see the end. But y'all will see a picture. I'll show y'all a picture. Yeah. Who knows? Me and Chris might come in here live tonight and come piece. I'll let y'all see it. No telling. It's not impossible. Look, I had a little bit of pie crust I could have used and made something. All right, let's get started on something else. Y'all ready? Be ready. Let me throw this. Oh, I should have had this pre-dating, Daddy. All right, tonight we're going to use our cast iron um, QBC. QBC skillet that somebody brought, bought us from QBC. So yeah, ain't it pretty? And there's not many colors left, and I don't even know if they got any colors left. Uh, because, you know, they run out of stuff there. So y'all can check it out and see if you can find one, if you want one. Because I sure do like mine, and thank you for it. All right. We can move this out of the way. Now we're going to concentrate on the Philly cheese. The easy part about this is the fact that we've got our beef already mixed, already shaved. We bought it shaved. This is a Nor beef bouillon, and it has melted into the cup of water, so this is beef stock. Now, you can use a beef stock, or you can make some, like I just did. But in the recipe, that's how it's listed. The recipe calls for... A sliced up onion, of course, and a clove of garlic. So we are going to get these ready for you while this skillet heats up. And then we'll start getting everything ready. We, we are affiliated with Rada Knives. I know you have one. Your mama had one, and you might, you might have one. Uh, but you can find them on our website. It does take you to their website, but it goes through us. And uh, we appreciate us shopping through our website. This is a large clove of garlic we're going to use in these. All right, now we're going to slice this up in the onion, y'all. You want to show them um, the cookbook, the recipe? Oh. Cheese steak hoagies. And that's in our third cookbook. Under beef section. And we're going to do almost the same thing except I tell you to use that Mexican cheese. Because that's what I like on mine. But tonight we're melting mozzarella on them. So you're going to take an onion and slice it thin. Now if you've got a steak, a ribeye then flash freeze it and slice it thin and it's a lot easier to slice the steak really really thin if you flash freeze it you can buy it sometimes already shaved aldi has it that way i don't know if your grocery store does or not but that's what we bought and what we're cooking tonight we're going to be using um, the garlic the onion We've got pep, sliced peppers. I actually put the peppers up in the freezer when I got them on sale, and we're going to use them tonight. Hmm. So we've got this thing going pretty hot. It's not real hot yet, but you're going to see I've got some peppers laying here. Mm -hmm. um, green and orange. Orange, yellow. Red. So we're going to put a little olive oil in here. Let's trade places, baby. Okay. These are big slices of peppers. Oh, he's in the middle. And so, this is going to pop like crazy. Mm -hmm. You're going to put the onions in first? And yeah. Put the... I 
mushroom. Mm. Got everything. So you're just gonna put them in a little at a time. <laughs> no, that's all I'm putting. Oh, that's all you put putting. All right. all right. Now I'm gonna look at my recipe, make sure I do it like the recipe book says. Okay. Okay. It says sliced piece of steak is sliced it. Combine the bouillon with the water. Um, whisk in the cornstarch. Preheat the iron skillet. Put in the veggies, not the garlic. Cook them on medium high till they're soft. Place the veggies in a plate. Add, add the beef and garlic. The oil, the butter. Okay. I got it. You got it. So we need a little cornstarch. How mm -hmm. much? Two, Two tablespoons. Tablespoon. Yeah, you did. Oh, what mercy. You left the sugar out and put up the cornstarch. Tablespoons. This is a half tablespoon. So it's going to take four of these. And you need to whisk this really good, okay? Or your sauce will be lumpy. So this is um, beef stock. You can make it with bouillon or pour it out of a container, however you want to do it, if you got some in the fridge, and then add your scored starch to that. This will go in last because it'll congeal, you know, and make a nice gravy. So we're going to cook these until they're nice and tender. Look how big that piece of mushroom is in there. <laughs> Monster much wood. I don't tell you to um, salt and pepper it or nothing. But now Dell sauce is real salty. We're gonna make it like my recipe says. We're gonna be using a little bit of butter in a minute. So let me get in. Do you want the buns to be it don't browned? We can throw them in the air fryer, but it'll be loud. Or we can put them on the little Thing right here, we got time. Yeah, I'll do that. Sure, I keep all my cast iron in this drawer. We were at Cracker Barrel and they have cast iron with Cracker Barrel on the bottom of it. It's nice, mm -hmm. and it crisps. Yeah, pretty, really nice. Yeah. All right, I'm just gonna make two, um, and then. We actually have kids here tonight, but I'm only going to make two for y'all, let you see them, and then the kids can eat whenever. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good thing about this, is you don't have to eat it as soon as it's ready. No, you don't. You heat it up later. Mm -hmm. I'm getting some dishes dirty. I know. Yeah. So what happens when you cook? Mm-hmm. That's why I like to cook instead of clean. But I do plate a little bit as I go. So I'm just gonna butter these a little bit. And some people don't want their bread buttered and some do, so if you don't, then don't butter it. But it is nice to have it heated up a little bit. So I'm just gonna heat it up on this little griddle I just turned on. And I say let's put a little garlic and salt on it. Why not? We got we got time while we're waiting on the veggies. Mm -hmm. That's that uh, garlic bread stuff. Yeah, the gourmet collection. Y'all know I like it. Every time you go in Ross, Marshalls, Home Goods, any of those type of stores, they have these gourmet collections over there in the gourmet foods. They're really good blends. I love all of them for the most part. Love them all. Bought a new one the other day called uh, Roast. Let's see, I hadn't used it in my roast yet, but Roast Vegetables and Fries. Mm. Sounds good, don't it? Mm. 
Mm-hmm. We've got a lot of them. All right, this is getting good and soft. It's good. I'm going to add a little pepper to it now. I can help myself. Yep. I'm sure you salt and peppered it before. I can't believe you wouldn't have. Uh, Probably just forgot to put it in the recipe. Y'all know my recipes ain't perfect. Every but recipe perfect. is salt and pepper to taste, pretty much. There you go. Salt and pepper. So when do we put in the dill sauce? I think we should add it to this. Can. Mix it up. Dill sauce is a tablespoon. Now this. If you don't know what dill sauce is. Let me show them a picture of that so they can. Yeah. It is a very concentrated steak sauce. And it's pretty much a really, really uh, strong beef flavor for the most part. And this is a half tablespoon, so I'm going to put in two of these to make a tablespoon. Just gives it a really good beef flavor. So you've got the beef stock and you've got that in there to give it an extra mm -hmm. lift. And this is salty. So if you're watching your salt, I don't know if they make a low sodium or not. They might. They very well might. That's good enough for me, is it you, Chris? That's good to me. Oh, I love this cast iron skillet. It's nice. It does a really good job. It Look does. Look how pretty that is. Yeah. Just purposely cooked. All right. What I'm talking about. Give me some. Smells good. All right, here we go. Think I can do this? Probably not. <laughs> that thing is heavy. I don't want to pick oh, it up. Oh, yeah. That's true. Now, when you use this thing, it's heavy, y'all. Uh-huh. So you better be strong. Better be ready. Or be like me and just flip it across the room. Bring your A-game. Now, look how pretty that looks. Mm. Yummy. All right. Mm. Here we go. Y'all ready? Little butter. Little butter, baby. Just a little butter. Why? Because that's what's good. Yep. I'm going to be careful. I'm not with that scratch. Okay. This is that shaved beef I was telling you about. It is shaved for sandwiches already. Hmm. Are you told them we got it from... Aldi? <coughs> Excuse Let's you. See. Excuse you. Uh, you all right? Yes. Yeah. All right, here we go. I must have got that pit. Hang on. I must need again. Oh, my goodness, Chris. <coughs> he got pepper in his nose. Woo. And he wasn't even standing over for you. Mm. All right, here goes the beef. Here we go. And as soon as it hits it, it's pretty much going to cook. Okay. And it's so thin. You've got to pull it apart a little bit for it all to not just mat up and not just, you know, some of it get done and some of it not. Mm -hmm. This is 14 ounces, so it's a good bit. But you couldn't shave it like that at home. That's <laughs> pretty thin. Unless you've got a... Pretty thin. Unless you're one of those that's Mando. got a... What do uh, you call those things? Oh, the friends? meat, uh, meat slicers. Slicers, yeah. Now, if you've got a meat slicer, you can. Yeah. Like at the deli. But you're not going to get it that thin with a knife. And I'm going to tell you, it's better when it's thin like this because that sauce gets all up in there. Mm hmm Good stuff. You know what? When I was coming up, Mama would make... Here, let me rinse my hands off. Manwiches. Y'all remember those when they first come out? Manwiches. Did your mama ever make those friends? Yeah. Everybody loved them. I know. Daddy was like, I'll tell you what I want. I want a manwich tonight. <laughs> it was all in commercials they had. Yeah. <laughs> they did a good job with their commercials. Yeah. This is a real man. This is a steak sandwich, not a manwich. Mm-hmm. 
a real thing, Daddy. This is going to cut it for me. I'm going to use this. Oh, the meat separator? Yeah. Good idea. Don't forget your, um, what do you call it, garlic. Oh, I forgot it, baby. I sure did. This is well, where you're supposed to add it. I figured. You add it when you add the meat because you don't ever want to overcook garlic if you do. And I didn't know that when I first started the show. But it has a lot better flavor if you don't overcook it. Garlic does. I knew since it was in that thing over there, it would be hard to remember. I wouldn't have remembered. I'm glad you told me. I get easy and excited. Forget mm -hmm. stuff. All right, let's put the garlic in. Let's do it. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Try to shake it around so it don't just get one spot. Oh. Now we got it. All right, it's done. All right, let me get something and try to pull this apart a little bit. Now we bought this at Aldi's. I haven't seen this at. Uh, have we seen this at another at other stores where they got it cut up like that already? Um, I guess you could get it at the, you know, like you no. buy Boar's Head or something. They, and they slice it up for you. It. All right, let's put in the sauce. And see how that's already settled to the bottom? You gotta mix it before you pour it in there. Because that corn starts settled. I turned it off to keep it from overcooking and now I gotta crazy. As soon as that gets to cooking good, I'm trying to pull this meat apart a little bit. We'll pull it apart while that's getting thick, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes you can get shaved beef, but most of the time they want to sell you that pre-cooked oh, yeah. steak and pre-cooked chicken for right. fajitas. And I just don't like that stuff. Now, I know some of y'all like it, but I'm funny about it. This is fresh meat. Fresh meat. All right, now it's getting thick. Can y'all see how it's getting thick? I don't know how good y'all can see. Well, it's hard to get real close. It's hard. So what I'm going to do is, um... Oh, crap. What? We forgot about our buns. Uh-oh. Well, they won't take but a second. I've got to move this meat, though. It's overcooking. Okay. Fast now. Yeah. We're doing bun and table. Got bone drinking in the background. Bone Live. cooking. <laughs> Live cooking ain't always easy cooking. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Nope. All right. Okay. That was too hot. Woo. Here we go. Here we go. What kind of is that? Oh. That's my phone. Don't it's worry about it. It's probably your daughter. What? She's the only one that'll call and keep calling. Might be your daughter. All right, come over here. And do, I want you to get a real good close up. What, me. like right here? No, like right, right yeah. up against it. Right. Yeah. There you go. Daddy. Mm -hmm. that looks pretty. Mm. Now that is a Philly steak and now what you have to do is you have to put the cheese on it and warm it so what we have to do is make one and if you don't want to call it philly you can just call it cheese, cheese steak. steak that's what i did that way, that way you can all right here we go we're going to make better. a couple of them and I wish I had a hoagie to put it on, but I don't. It's pretty stacked. I'm going to set it right here. Okay. Try not to get burnt. 
I wouldn't think you'd even have to put it in the air fryer. It's so hot. You caught me looking, my. That cheese will melt on it. Won't it? Maybe. <laughs> I'll put it on there and find out. Okay. Mozzarella. Mm -hmm. Sliced this time. Oh, the pot here. Sliced mozzarella. I can tell you one thing, if I stick it in that air fryer for two seconds, it'll melt. Mm -hmm. There yeah. won't be no questions. Nope, well, I don't have no questions. No questions here. Some meat on this one. I had the craziest dream. I'm thinking about the dream I had last night. I dream we went to this, we moved to the city and this man run everything in the city and uh, we went over there and he had a big garden i'm gonna stick this in there for a couple seconds okie dokie he had a big garden and my kids were little and guess what he they had given the kids to eat for a snack an irish potato and they were all just eating them like they were delicious mm -hmm. They were. Now they weren't raw, but they no. were all eating them, and they had the no plain kidding. old potato. You know those cardboard bins they put watermelons in. Mm -hmm. They had one of those full potatoes. They had just gotten potatoes out of the garden. <laughs> That's how many potatoes they had. Yeah, it was a good dream. I enjoyed it. Yeah. So anyway, y'all might not care about my dreams, but it was nice. Whew. Feel like I've been through a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. Do y'all feel like y'all been through one too? I do. That was wild. Pies and chili steak. Mm-hmm. You think it's ready? I don't know. I don't know. I think it is. Do you really? Yeah, it's enough. I don't know how much. Now, if we weren't live, uh -huh. I would have toasted my bread in the air fryer, not on this flat thing. I don't like this flat thing yeah. that much. The only reason I use it is because the air fryer is so loud when we're live. But to give you a tip, it works better for toasting your t bread than this thing. Unless you want to stand over it and hold it down and all that. But, you know, I don't have time to do that when we're live. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work, Betty. Y'all ready to see the final product? I am. I'm just going to slice it right here so y'all can see it. You can serve it on an open face bread like this. And not even put a bun on the top. I want y'all to see how pretty it is, so I don't want to put the bun on the top of it, okay? See, it wasn't melted enough or it would be real cheesy, cheesy, cheesy. Anyway. Hmm. That's Land of Lakes mozzarella, so it's good stuff. And it's going to be really hot. Yep, better be careful. It's got plenty of salt. The bouillon has salt and flavorings, and so does the dill sauce. So it's got plenty of flavor. It's delicious. Mm. Looks good. So, yummy yum. Now, see. Now it's melting. That's how it should look when you take a bite of it. All right. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Y'all want to see the pie before we leave too? It's got a long way to go.
because it's on 300 degrees. So it's going to take it 90 minutes. Y'all have a blessed day, a blessed night. And thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like mama.